time as I may consume? The gentleman is recognized. Thank you. I rise in opposition to this resolution. My Republican friends continue to be in a state of denial for the climate crisis, uh, the real and urgent sense that we have now. Last month in Houston, I had an opportunity to meet with two dozen leaders of the uh, renewable energy uh, sector. Uh, they weren't concerned about rolling back the things that we've done. They wanted to accelerate it. The chairman and my Republican colleagues have spoken at length about the importance of increasing accountability for China's unfair trade practices and maintaining protection for American workers. It's interesting, though, that these same individuals voted against democratic provisions to strengthen our anti-dumbing and circumvention laws and reauthorize the trade adjustment assistance in the American Competes Act. They all voted against the Inflation Reduction Act's provision to incentivize clean energy domestic manufacturing. And in fact, two days ago, they voted to repeal these provisions. This resolution would undermine America's hard-fought wins in the Inflation Reduction Act. There are problems. No doubt, the Chinese are likely cheating. But President Biden stuck, struck the right balance by instituting a temporary freeze on these solar tariffs. This approach is how we fix the long-term problem. Importantly, he has said that he does not intend to extend the freeze beyond June 2024, and that he will veto this resolution if it gets to his desk. My friends on the other side of the aisle are concerned about working men and women. I would point out that the president's position is consistent with the leaders in organized labor, from IBEW, from Luna, the carpenters and operating engineers, people who represent these hardworking Americans, as well as organizations in the environmental community and the National Taxpayers Union. This is a two-year bridge that gives the solar industry the time needed to reorient supply chains away from China and produce panels domestically. We can't do that overnight, but we're committed to making that change. For too long, the United States has lacked a cohesive, renewable energy manufacturing policy. As a result, we've outsourced far too much of our production. In 2021, there are only seven gigawatts of domestic manufacturing capacity. That's the reality. But the Inflation Reduction Act marks a significant departure from those flawed policies of the past. This legislation bakes in domestic content bonuses in clean energy credits to incentivize the industry to onshore production. But that takes time. It also revives the advanced manufacturing credit and created a new manufacturing production tax credit. The Inflation Reduction Act has already led to the announcement of more than 45 gigawatts of domestic solar manufacturing capacity. Again, my Republican colleagues voted to repeal all those incentives just two days ago. Ending the President's temporary um, uh, initiative would immediately institute high retroactive tariffs in the hundreds of percent that would hurt solar development, increase energy costs, and lead to a supply reduction at exactly the moment when the climate crisis means that we need to ramp it up. Many of us in Congress worked for years to achieve the policy victories contained in the Inflation Reduction Act. The clean energy tax credits are projected to reduce carbon emissions 40 percent by 2030, giving us a legitimate chance to meet the goals contained in the Paris Climate Agreement. We should resist these efforts to undermine this hard-won victory for America. I would encourage my colleagues to take a hard look at this legislation and then reject it when it comes before us for a vote. I reserve the balance of my time.